there, friends. Welcome to your special Saturday edition of Hot News, where we go over this week in news, which is a twin because we're just covering everything that already we covered. So it's a duplicate, a doppelganger, a replica, if you will. And don't forget, this week in news was best had with breakfast, okay? Hot news and breakfast go together like shubop, shawada, wada, waba, bodinga dong. Thank you for all the feedback that you gave into this episode last week. Hopefully I can uh, roll all of that into making a good positive episode for you this week. And with that being said, let's go ahead and jump on into the news that you may have missed this week. Up first, AMD filed a patent for quantum computing where they could potentially make teleportation work in a way that makes qubits more stable in a quantum computer. Not gonna go too deep on this, but AMD looking to stretch beyond the realities of normal Ryzen chips and get into the horizon, event horizon of a black hole, which is inevitably gonna come from quantum computing. It's all a beautiful application that AMD is looking to get into. Also, Cloudflare announced that it's looking to get into AMD CPUs trousers a little bit more. Don't know why I decided to go with that metaphor, but they're going deeper instead of having Rome Epic servers. They're now switching over to Milan with them saying that they looked into switching to Intel's Ice Lake, but while they offered similar performance to Milan, they did it at several hundred watts more than AMD's chips, so they're gonna be sticking with that. So good for AMD's server department and also good for Genesis Mining's lawsuit. One of the most premier cloud mining companies that happened way back in 2019 had a lawsuit filed against them where they got an injunction against 60,580 ant miners and roughly half a million RX 470 G GPUs that were held up in litigation. The Chinese Supreme Court ruling in their favor, and now those GPUs are going back to them. This likely will mean that there's gonna be a flood of RX 470s out on the market, especially with the fact that China has been cracking down on cryptocurrency mining, so it's probably not gonna go back into a different system unless they wanna to switch to a different country, in which case they're gonna ship half a million. RX 470s. You want to know where GPUs went? That's exactly where they went. In case you were wondering where GPUs that are current are going, well, it looks like Nvidia is going to have to slow down production of the 3060 Ti and 3060 in the month of September in order for various different things that are happening. Also, a lot of GPU supply might be down because of COVID concerns in different factories that produce parts that have to go into the GPUs. So it might be that GPU supply goes down while the price goes up, which goes along with the report that GPUs are now again trending back up in the price category sector at 164% of MSRP for AMD cards and 159% of MSRP for Nvidia cards. It's not necessarily as bad as it was, but it does look to be increasing. And if GPU supply is reducing, that likely means that this trend will continue in the vertical direction, which is not the route that you wanna go. But as we're talking about you not being able to get your hands on cards and them being too expensive, let's talk about the next generation, which is probably gonna be all of the above. There's new rumors that are coming out about the RTX 40 series that Nvidia's loveless GPUs will be switched from Samsung back over to TSMC on their five nanometer production. And there's some reports that it might come out earlier than late 2022. So maybe the second half of 2022, but the earlier part, it's not yet known. But as long as we could theorize about what next gen is gonna be, boy, how is gonna be a good day for all them rumor channels out there. And EVGA squashing the rumors about why the RTX 3090s were dying in Amazon's MMO New World, instead of it being for some fan controller that was happening or the New World, the game just kinda just deciding to stab the GPUs in the heart. EVGA coming out and saying that it was poor soldering job on their part and that they are going to make sure that they number one RMA, everybody who's affected, but also that it doesn't affect a whole lot of their cards, less than 1% according to them. But something that looks like it could affect a lot of our cards, if not all of our cards, is a malicious bit of malware that can affect your GPU's VRAM using the memory buffer in a way that's not detectable by systems. This is actually being reported by threat repositories saying that this is a real threat that's out there and they're going to have a demonstration of this technique sometime soon with the technique being sold to to the highest bidder on August 25th, and with it being tested on things such as Intel's integrated graphics, AMD's RX 5700, NVIDIA's GTX 740M, so a mobile GPU right there, and then also their desktop class GTX 1650. It only works with Windows workstations that support OpenCL 2.0 and higher, so if you're on Linux, you're probably okay, at least at this point from this one post. But don't worry, malware will come for you no matter where you are. You think you're safe in your bed? No, it's gonna sneak up, it's gonna snatch those blankets right off your bed and it's gonna hold them ransom say you gotta pay me 13 bitcoin or i'm keeping them under here jimmy you can't get your sheets back never 
And you want your GPUs back, right, my friends? Of course you do. Well, NVIDIA had the plan that they were gonna roll out mining cards that could potentially help you with that. And the 170HX crypto mining card with 164 mega hashes has been revealed. This is based on the A100 accelerator card with a few defects that are going on to it. It has eight gigabytes of HBM2E memory. It can do all of that mega hashing at roughly 250 watts. It appears to be the ultimate mining card that could potentially be out on the market. We'll see if it gets any sort of retail availability anytime soon. CD Projekt Red targeting the next gen Witcher 3 update to be coming out by the end of this year. I am very much looking forward to it. Let me know if you are. And then just after we did our This Week in News last week where I reported on the PS5 being 300 grams lighter. Everybody, once a video was released where Austin Evans showed that it wasn't just things like the screws that got changed, but rather it was the heatsink. People came into last week's This Week in News and was like, hey, your PS5 report's wrong. Yeah, because new news came out after I posted the video. That's how the news works. Anyways, that happened. Austin Evans getting his hands on the newest PS5 with a 300 grams lighter, which indicated that the heat sink got completely changed. It is 300 grams lighter, meaning that it has less copper and aluminum. He also reported that number one, it also ran quieter with a new fan design that happened to be in it, as well as the exhaust temperatures on the back are roughly five degrees Celsius hotter than on the base PS5, which he theorized could potentially cause some issues long-term with the PS5 to potentially have thermal issues. However, Digital Foundry is doing a deeper report as they get their hands on this new PS5 and indicating that it's likely not doing that. It draws the exact same amount of power. The fan is definitely quieter, which means that it's more efficient. So even if it is hotter at the exhaust, it means that it's probably running fully within spec because if it wasn't, the fan would be louder because it'd be ramping up to higher RPMs. And likely what happened is not that the PS5 needed that massive heat sink with all of that copper and aluminum. And instead they needed something lesser, but they didn't have time to engineer the proper amount. And so they just slapped on as much as they could grab and threw it on there. Is the launch PS5 gonna have a beefier cooler? You betcha, but does that necessarily mean it's better or that you need to be worried about the new edition? Not at all. That's just the reports that are coming out of Digital Foundry who have a history of being able to technically analyze consoles in a way that I think I, I respect. What I don't respect is the pricing strategy that's coming out for Horizon Forbidden West. It's now been reported that in case you want to get the PS5 version of Horizon Forbidden West and the PS4 version, you have to buy at least the digital deluxe edition, which costs $90. If you buy the standard edition, which costs $70, while you're on the PS4, you cannot upgrade to the PS5 unless you buy the game again. So you either have to spend $140 or at the very minimum have the foresight to be like, you know what, I'm going to get a PS5 down the line. I'm going to want to play Horizon Forbidden West, let me spend the $90 now. So either way, Sony or Guerrilla Games forcing you to spend more money, which is atypical of the recent stuff that they've been doing. Horizon Zero Dawn got a free upgrade to the PS5, so why can't Horizon Forbidden West? It's a mystery, I think it's shady. I don't necessarily like it. Poor practice, Microsoft doing a much better job in that department of making sure that games have future compatibility. China, however, making sure that children don't get time to play video games with them, implementing a new restriction that makes it so children can only play for three hours a week of video games, which is 8 to 9 p.m. on Friday through Sunday, and then potentially on public holidays as well. This is actually a further reduction of gaming times that was only one and a half hours per day since 2019. This is something that China has kind of been cracking down on as they've had reports that have come out from the internal ministries in the government saying that video games are bad for children, it's turning their brains to mush. So now they're implementing new strategies in order to reduce what they call the spiritual opium of the minds for their children. And I got to reduce the time I'm thinking about Windows 11 because Microsoft reported this week that Windows 11 is launching on October 5th. You can get a free upgrade from Windows 10 unless you happen to be on unsupported hardware, which we'll get to that in a second. But they're also announcing that Windows 11 will not support Android apps at launch like they initially said that it was going to. But Microsoft reporting that it has compatibility in mind, but they only mean that in the software context of things. If you're on uncompatible hardware or incompatible hardware rather, then you do not meet the requirements in order to be on the Windows 11 in setter program and you have to roll back to Windows 10. And then they also announced that you will not be able to get security updates on Windows 11 on unsupported hardware because it is all about security, my friends. And in case you're curious of what happens when you currently run Windows 11 on an unsupported CPU, go check out the video that we did on UFD Tech where it checked out exactly that. Speaking of confusing things, the launch of the Tesla Roadster is something that's been confusing. It should have come out in 2021. It didn't. Elon Musk saying that it's probably not going to come out until 2023. And that's if 
2022 doesn't have any mega drama such as supply chain issues. And if it does, well, then you'll get your Roadster when pigs fly. I don't exactly know. And also something that Tesla's been hard to nail the date on is the rollout of full self-driving. The people who paid multi-thousands of dollars in order to get this feature enabled. The latest report from Elon Musk is that it should come out the week of September 24th. We'll see if that actually happens. GM announcing that they are gonna stop making all Chevy Bolts. This is coming after the fact that they recalled every single Chevy Bolt uh, because their batteries catch fire. So you probably don't wanna be making more of them. It's a good call by Chevy. It also got reported earlier this week that Apple will be implementing implementing low earth orbit satellite communications on the upcoming iPhone 13. However, as more reports came out, especially from Bloomberg, it indicated that while the hardware should be on the iPhone 13 for having satellite communication, the software will not be ready at launch. And when it does launch, it will likely be for emergency first responders, personnel who are gonna be out in the field where they can't necessarily connect to cell. And so they'll be able to send messages through the low earth orbit satellites and not necessarily something that's just gonna be like randomly used for message or anything. And with that last article, that was this week in news. Your recap on hot news that happened this week. There was a lot more that I talked about in each episode of hot news, as well as giving more of my opinion in this week's episode. So why don't you go ahead and check out at least Monday's episode, see what you missed in case you want a deeper dive. But this is your quick little catch up. We should be having a special Sunday edition of hot news for you tomorrow. I'm going to see if I can get that done. Unlike last week where I completely screwed it up. With that being said, I'm your Brett host. Thank you for joining me for breakfast and I'll catch you tomorrow for another episode of Hot News, my friends. Chip, chip, cheerios.